final frontier begins. This is about saving the future of humanity. This is a huge victory for the good guys. You've never seen Voyager. Commitment to this course of action is not emotional. Johnny, beam us up. Welcome to another episode of Beam Me Up, a Star Trek Picard for the First Time Leadership Academy podcast. I am Brent Allen, and I've seen every episode of Star Trek 47 times, but I am watching Star Trek Picard season three for the first time. And I'm Jeff Aiken, and I've also seen every episode of Star Trek 47 times, and I am also watching Star Trek Picard Season 3 for the first time. That's right, and what you guys are watching is a mashup uh, of all podcasts come together. This is Beam Me Up, a Star Trek podcast, Phase 2. This is also... Um, a little mashup of, of Jeff and mine's podcast together of Babylon five for the first time, bringing some of those elements in, but also on the other side, my man, Jeff with the Starfleet leadership Academy. Yeah. Brent, we love our games on our podcasts. Yes. One of our favorite games that we play on Babylon five for the first time is the rule of three, but we're going to flip it on its head a little bit for this one, because this is is a Star Trek podcast. So that means we each get up to three references to any franchise other than Star Trek and... That's it. Three. Uno, dos, tres. No substitutions, exchanges, or refund. (laughs) Well, Jeff, that's not the only game that we play. Before we play our next game, though, we play I do a terrifying to a game. Shout out. Do what? We play a terrifying. It is game. a terrifying game. I'm really nervous about this. <laughs> it's it's what this uh, this iteration of um, be me up a Star Trek Picard podcast for the first time leadership a cat whatever we're calling this thing. It, it's the 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 gimmick, the shtick, though whatever where we have to do this within a certain set amount of time. Now, I'm going to talk about that more in just a moment, but I do want to give a quick shout out because this is being live streamed. Yes. We are live right now. This is not pre-recorded. You and I are talking together right now, and there are folks out there. I see David out there. What's up? I see O Chavez. I see our friend Nia, who's out there. Um, Baronessa, who just really summed up what we're doing here. (laughs) <laughs> yes, a podcast amalgam and the secret crisis on the infinite fandoms. Um, so hello to everyone out there. And I just want to say a quick hello to all of you in the future who are watching us uh, later. You won't be in the live chat, but you will still be here. Please be sure to subscribe down below uh, or click the subscribe button Wherever and uh, comment down below. Uh, you guys know how YouTube works. Just do the YouTube thing. All right, Jeff, game. Let's, Let's do it. Do it. Let's do it. Okay, so here's the thing. Jeff and I said that this has to be a show where uh, we've got to talk quick. We've got to get through this super fast and make everything happen that needs to happen as we get through. So for that, uh, in the the chat, I said that this show is going to be in 30 minutes or less. And I mean, quite literally, 30 minutes or less. And so with that, uh, here's the game. We don't know how long we have to talk about this episode. Right. We're going to find out right now. We have a number generator. If you guys are listening to the body of feet of this later, uh, just know that there is a number generator up on the screen right now. Jeff, we are setting this today between 15 and 30 minutes. (sighs) This is going to have you ever watched pardon the interruption over on ESPN? Oh, yeah. They only have a certain amount of time to hit each topic. That's pretty much how this is going to go. Only we'll, we'll do it just once for the whole thing. Jeff, shall we find out? Oh, man. Shall we find out how long we have? Because there's a lot to get into with this particular episode. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Let's spin the wheel and find out what we've got. Oh, wait, it's going. This wheel, I tested this earlier, Jeff. I'll let you know. This wheel takes forever. Well, that's good. We can use that to uh, just stop. set everyone up for what's happening as we're going to dive into the episode as soon as this comes up. Does our time start as soon as it comes up? When we when we say go, because we'll we'll set a couple of parameters. Uh-oh, okay. here we go. Oh, 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 it's going down. Oh, no, it's going no. down. No, 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 it went. <gasps> Jeff. I don't know if we can do this. 
We are at 16 minutes. That is almost as bad as it could possibly be. We can do and this. as We're bad as it can get. We have 16 minutes. And so when we click go, guys, here's the deal. We don't even get an outro. At 16 minutes, the live stream cuts off. Once Not 16 we, minutes once, total, 16 minutes from go. Let's yeah, I want to be 16 yeah, minutes yeah. from go. That is the complete discussion. So Jeff, you, we got to go quick. Be judicious about the things you want to talk about. <laughs> and let's see what we get into. Um, let's hear. Is there anything else that we need? So we're gonna so here's what we're gonna try to do in 16 minutes. We're going to try to, uh, we're not recapping the episode. Hey, spoiler alert from this point forward. If you have not seen episode two or one of Star Trek Picard season three, stop right now. Go watch the episodes and come back. All right. Or unless you just want to be spoiled and you don't really care uh, because we are no holds barding all the way through. Uh, but we're going to talk about what we saw happen in this app in this episode. Um, I am going to cover what our, our B5 friends know as the Delta section, mm -hmm. uh, literally doing the Star Trek messages coming out of this. Jeff, you're doing the leadership messages coming out of this. Yep. And, uh, and, and maybe we might even talk about where we think it's going from here. Possibly, maybe. Jeff, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I am setting the timer right now. I'm, if I was really great, I'd have like an on-screen timer. Well, you had the cool wheel. I mean, I can't. I did have the cool wheel. I, I'm just not sure how to do the timer yet, given our situation here. So you're just going to have to trust me. I'm setting it on my watch because uh, it's going to click off. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, listen, hey, hey, our, our friend Baroness says 16 minutes is a go. We can do it, Jeff. We, we can, can do, do it. This. You ready? This is going to be the complete thorough deep dive into... Picard season uh, season three episode two 16 minutes Jeff starts right oh wait I was about to hit in broadcast <laughs> <laughs> right now I not do that <laughs> we're not playing any more jokes those are oh those my gosh. Are done okay okay wait, wait, wait here here I'm gonna I'm gonna make it nice and even I've got 7 26 27 28 29 30 Jeff 16 minutes starts right now what did you think of Star Trek season three episode two disengage I enjoyed a bunch of this episode. There's a good chunk of it I did not care for at all. What did you think? I loved this episode front to back. Really? Um, I hate Shaw. I, Last week, I kind of gave him some props. There are people who are going to love him, and I know you're probably one of them. I am. But no, I cannot wait for my Delta section here at the end because we're going to talk about my man, Shaw, and what's going on. But overall, this was the perfect next step to everything to the whole story we got answers to the things that we asked last time mm -hmm. i want to dive into the thing that i did not like and that's pretty much the whole raffi storyline that we're doing so this is okay this is the this is portal right so we're playing the the classic game portal but mm -hmm. on an intergalactic fatal uh stakes here i i didn't like that she's like going rogue here's my hope that this is all part of the plan, but I don't think it is. I don't think, I think Raffi going rogue is bad news. I loved her husband calling her out on it and yep. giving her that choice. And then when she's like, I want Sneed, I'm just like, oh God, I liked this character of Raffi. Did not like this at all. What were your thoughts on uh, um, the Raffi stuff? Well, Jeff, I have a question. Did you ever read the... Uh, Star Trek, the the Picard the prequel. season one prequel novel. Yes. Yeah, where, part where she chose doing the 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 extraction stuff over her family. Yes, yeah. but that really dove into her history with her family, and we barely got a glimpse of them in season one. I don't think we even touched them in season two. Mm -mm. So it was neat to see them bring this piece back around. Yeah, um, I agree. Her husband calling her out for exactly what she is. It is true. I didn't realize that her husband was in the middle of all that as well. Yeah. He got himself out. Both of them, though, I have issues with because they are, if I'm understanding right, they are both addicts mm -hmm. and they are continuing to live and work in the space of their addiction. Yep. And I don't love that for them. And that's not smart. I don't care what you're doing at Starfleet Intelligence. That is not it's a not smart good. move. It's not smart. It's, and it's just not good. And they're compromised. Rafi is now fully compromised. Mm -hmm. Um, but she goes in. I loved though. I loved the new Ferengi. I did. Yes. This is this great. is this is the least cartoonish Ferengi I have ever seen in my life. I believed him. He felt real. 
I loved the gritty tattoos. Yeah. And, the stubble. And, uh, apparently, Ferengi can grow beards. Apparently. Apparently. But he was 100% Ferengi. Everything about him felt very, very Ferengi. This was a dirty, dark, dank. I'm. Was this outside the Federation, I guess? I, I don't know. We haven't. I don't think we've gotten that yet. Exist within the Federation. Yeah. Federation space. But maybe it does. But like uh, with Sneed, who, who keeps the severed head of the Romulan dude just behind your couch? Just like, oh, dude, I, just, was, I just kept this have it oh my gosh that was that was a uh when he he's like oh really you work for you work for that dude Uh uh-huh uh-huh yeah i got him right here like that was that was wild but jeff oh go ahead i was gonna say to to wrap this section up i had two things one wharf looked amazing uh someone over here in the chat said i agree he did not come in and fight with honor he was stabbing people in the back this wasn't what i expected yeah yep yeah i completely agree but um, yeah. to kind of sum up the, this storyline, I think this is anti-Star Trek. Like this, Picard has leaned into the seedy underbelly of the of the galaxy outside of the sparkly Starfleet that we see and everything else. Mm-hmm. And I think that the point of this whole thing is going to be, here's the anti-Star Trek meets Star Trek. Yeah. And then kind of takes us through, because we have that same thing happening up in um, on, on the Titan as well. Well, I, I would argue that Star Trek has already done this when they did Deep Space Nine. They just didn't have the technology and the budget. You put Deep Space Nine in with today's effects, set design, production values. It's going to look like And this. this is what Deep Space Nine is. Yeah. Um, and this is what Ira Stephen Bear was going for with Deep Space Nine was, uh, listen, it's easy to be perfect when you're living in utopia. Right. What about when you're not? And but I like what you say, Jeff. That this show is about the the perfect Starfleet meeting the imperfect, and how those two collide. And I might come back to that a little bit later. I do have to touch on Worf though. Worf looked fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was less than honorable. He was stabbing people, but listen, all's fair and true love and war. This is the most badass I have ever seen Worf fight. Yep. Every time I've seen seen. Worf fight to this point, it looks janky. I do not buy that he's this big, awesome warrior who's who's damn near indomitable. And he just looks like the fight choreography is off. This was awesome. It was. I loved it. I agree. Best Worf we've seen. What's our next topic? We got to move on. Um, Hey, listen, let's talk about Shaw and everything going on with Shaw up on the station. What, What do you think about him? I loved Shaw. On this, he uh, he was he was right to have uh, relieved seven of duty. She was insubordinate. She was acting against orders. I, I really felt like what we had in this was you've got uh, Shaw on one side, who's all about order and rules, and these are the mm-hmm. procedures. Then you have P- P- uh, Picard and Riker over here, who are just like, but we have this important cause that we believe in, and we're really good at bending those rules to make things. So that's the conflict that we have there. I, I think in this case, like Shaw was a jerk. Yeah. Him berating seven on the bridge in front of everyone, inexcusable. Inexcusable. Other than that, he was right. Yeah. Um Shaw was right in as much as Captain Jellico was right. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, uh they're outside Federation space. Protocols are clear. You do what you have to for your crew. However, Uh, To quote something that Picard said to Seven earlier is like, or Seven says something to the effect of, "I've never learned how to just go with, uh, to to go with protocol and ignore my gut." And Picard himself says, "Hey, listen, if you ever figure it out, let me know because I've never figured that out either." Mm -hmm. And I would tell you that what we have seen, that what they want in Starfleet and what they want to put up there, I've also seen this in places like what NASA wants out of its astronauts. They want people who can think freely. Yep. They want people who can look at the rules, interpret them in light of their given situation, and then choose a path forward based on their principles and their ideals and not following the letter of the law. And where Shaw screws up to me is he he is scared. He does not want conflict. He is following a letter of the law, and he's not being Starfleet. He's not being who he's supposed to be. And I go all the way back to a line that, that Jean-Luc said in season one because it wasn't Starfleet anymore. Mm. And this is to what you said a second ago. This is going to be old Starfleet meeting new Starfleet, bringing new Starfleet back around. I'm okay with the idea that Starfleet has forgotten who it is and has sort of devolved, but I need them to come back and be the shining hope, the, the beacon on a hill that they yeah they've once become were. they've become a massive bureaucracy 
that's yeah. that's filtered into the into there. But I think I think that Shaw is operating within that bureaucracy the right way. You mentioned that he was scared, and I agree that was part of the story with Jellico as well. But when mm-hmm. they meet the Captain uh, Vadic or Vadic, who mm-hmm. showed up in the 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 Shrike, the Shrike, she, she yeah. says, um, you know, she said something about, hey, it's good to see you're you're keeping yourself cool or whatever. Like, there's there's a backstory with Shaw that was, yeah. is going to start playing through. The last thought I have on Shaw is. He gave up command to Picard as soon as the, the game changed. Mm-hmm. I respect that he knew when he was beat, right? He was just like, okay, so this is now completely outside my skill set, and we're playing a different game. I'm not the dude for this. Admiral, I would disagree with that. Really? I would disagree with that. I think he ceded to, to Picard's pulling rank. I Picard pulled rank in that moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think Shaw was ready to give it up. I think Shaw just went, okay, you are an admiral, retired or not. You are an admiral. Maybe it's a mashup of both, actually, Jeff, because he is retired. I guess he doesn't really have yeah. rank over him anymore, right? Not a, especially um, not on an active vessel that's outside of Starfleet jurisdiction. Starfleet space, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna reel back in what I said, and I'm gonna go with what you said uh, to that. Here's the, here's the last thing, and I, I can't wait to get to your leadership piece. We've got oh my gosh, Jeff, we are we are at uh, oh gosh, what is that? Be like six nine minutes. minutes. Nine we have minutes. we have we have seven minutes left. Uh, but I will say this, Shaw was not listening to his people. He was acting as judge, jury, and executioner, shutting everyone out. There is no way you can tell me, Mr. Leadership Guy, that that's being a good leader. Oh, 100%. Can't do it. And I can't wait to get to your thing. Hey, we've got to get over to Beverly and Jack Crusher and Picard and Riker calling Picard out almost at the beginning of the episode saying, he looks like your sons. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, how are you not seeing this? Hello. Hello. And also, no way. No way Jack Crusher is 20 years old. That guy's 41 if he's a day. No, no, no. All right, so I've got, I've, I did some math on this. I went and checked it out, okay? I've got three theories. I'm going to try to do them very quickly. One, uh, he, he is 20 years old, and this is a simple case. Ed Spilliers, by the way, is 34 years old. Okay. The actor is 34 years old. He's just a 34-year-old actor playing a 20-year-old dude, 20-ish year old dude. And that being, you know, Picard and Beverly, they had some sort of relationship beforehand, uh, it developed into more romantic over the course of seven seasons. We never really saw anything come to fruition out of that. We did see that they got married and all good things, but whatever. And then they did hook up afterwards. They had a baby and uh, she got pregnant and shut everybody out for some reason. Cause she got pregnant. Like we don't understand what that's about. There's that. Or Jeff, if let's assume this is in 2401, maybe 2402, take your mm-hmm. pick early 25th century. You know what year it is if you go back 34 years, the age of Ed Spilliers? What's that? We're right in the middle of season three of, of The Next Generation. Really? Uh-huh. Now, give or take his age. Give or take what, what the character is supposed to be. Let's say he's about actually Ed Spilliers' age. You know what happened in season two of The Next Generation? Hmm. Beverly disappeared for a year into Starfleet Medical. Yeah. Do you know what happened in season four of The Next Generation? Uh, 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 Gates McFadden was pregnant and they tried to hide it, but they didn't do a good job because you could still tell she was pregnant. I'm just saying it actually works out for Ed Spilliers to be, or for Jack Crusher to be 30 something years old. Okay. And have been born during the time of next generation. So maybe, maybe when, uh, Picard was getting his heart surgery with Pulaski, he popped over and he's like, Hey, Beverly, what's going on? Well, I mean, or it was sometime in season one and Beverly was like, yo, I'm pregnant. I got to go live with uh, aunt Sally for about nine months. Mm -hmm, Yeah. You know, I got to go be Starfleet medical for nine months. That's the, that's the excuse. That's, I'm just saying that's all speculative. We don't know. I'm just saying it is within the construct of the story that he could either be 20 something or he really could be 35. Yeah. Okay. I buy it. I buy it. I buy it more than just seeing him and thinking he's 20, Mm -hmm. but what a story, right? So he's got a bunch of different AKAs. He's literally a criminal. He, you know, he sees himself that whole thing, depending on who's in power, are you a criminal or you, are you a terrorist or a freedom fighter? Right. Mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker and the rebels comport, you know, for the empire, were just a bunch of terrorists. It's all a matter of perspective. And so that's Jack Crusher. And and, I, and I'll talk about it some more. I, I won't have time. So really where he talks about, he really calls Picard out where he's just like. Jeff, we're at four minutes. Yep. He's where he's Go. just literally. People have changed, dude. Like you can't. She's not who she was last time you right. saw her and you can't judge her that way. Right. What thoughts do you have on it? No, I that, listen. Uh, I 
I love it. I knew that that's who it was. This is where we have to be. Uh, uh, oh, I'm wasting time here. Uh, listen, listen, this is just, this is the storyline that we're going with. This yeah. is his kid and he's a rogue and he he's remember uh, young Picard in tapestry. Yeah. That's who he is. That's who this guy yeah. is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so so I'm all for it. Jeff, we've got to come down to Deltas and Leaders. We do. Academy. Real quick, I have yes. three super fast uh, production notes. One, um, the, the space battles, the space stuff, super cinematic, looked great. I loved when Worf walked off um, and we got like the movie style um, Klingon music a little bit in there. And then when they went into the nebula, we got that sting from going into the Mutara nebula. Really great musical notes on this one. Great production. Brent Deltas. Yeah, so um, listen, I'm going to go back to Shaw on this one, maybe even a little bit with Worf. And these are situations where you have people who are leading who are not listening to their folks, and bad stuff happens. They're not taking in the the uh, advice of the experts around them. Jeff, I'm going to go back to your last episode on Starfleet Leadership Academy and the children shall lead. They're not letting the experts be the experts. People go out there and listen to that episode, even though the Star Trek episode it's based on was awful. Uh, Jeff did a fantastic take on it. Um, he is he is scared and and he's acting so not Starfleet. Um, uh, you know, Picard says at one point, he's like, listen, you should, you, you need to be standing in front of the, the courts, not this crazy person over here. We don't back down to people who do this. We don't do that. And we're not being yourself. If you, if you don't, Picard did exactly what he needed to do to find a way out of the situation, dove into the nebula. He's acting Starfleet. Shaw's not Shaw needs to go. He's not good. Jeff, what do you got in leadership? You have one minute and a half, 90 seconds. Big part of leadership is negotiating with people. I could talk about what you talked about and how horrible some of that stuff was, but we got Picard and Jack Crusher in the thing. And what Picard did in that moment was paint a picture where he backed Jack Crusher into a place. And then he they realized everything. He used an excellent tool, which is just naming everything. He mirrored what Jack said, and then he laid out the facts. He laid out the constraints. This is a masterful negotiation tool. And then he made it a shared problem. Right, right. We got this much time. We have these problems. We have we're outgunned. We're all this seconds. So what are we going to do? And in that moment, Jack was able to make a decision, a self uh, sacrificing decision. It turns out to go save everyone. It was incredible. But that was because of Picard's ability as a leader to meet Jack where he was, question him in the tone and tenor he needed to be questioned, and then lay everything out and make it a shared problem. Jeff, 30 seconds. What's happening next week? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see where this uh, mark. I think we're gonna start seeing where this Vedic person ties to Sneed and everything is. And I think those seeds are gonna start getting planted this next week. Yeah, I'm gonna say this. I think Vedic ship is a is a uh, modified Starfleet vessel. Ooh, it looks like a Starfleet vessel that's had some mods on it. Ten seconds left. Hey, you guys, thanks so much for joining us. Sixteen minutes is not enough, Jeff. No. Are we crazy? Yeah. We're doing it this way. People say it in the chat. I want more than sixteen minutes, Patrick. We do. Two.